Hey guys, it's Kyle down here at LunaCycle. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the motor on your Talaria Sting MX3 slash MX4. Now, today we have a customer who was trying to drain the oil and he, instead of loosening the drain bolt, he tightened it and he tightened it so much that he actually cracked the little drain plug threads. Um, so the only way to actually swap out the gearbox, you do need to fully remove the motor. Now this is more of an advanced video. Um, this isn't going to be for your everyday at home rider. Um, that's why I'm not going to show you the every single step. Like I'm not going to show you how to remove the controller or the bash guard or the little cover. Um, if you need a video on how to remove those things, then you probably shouldn't be trying to remove your motor. Um, so I am just going to get right into it. Um, in order to remove the motor, you have two main bolts on this side, you have two main bolts on the other side. You also have one gearbox bolt right here which needs to get removed. Um, and then before you actually start to unbolt this stuff, you do want to unplug the little uh, drain or vent hose. The little hose can stay where it's routed for the time being. Um, you also don't want to forget to unplug the encoder or the little DC converter. So you want to be sure everything's unplugged from this. Um, it also doesn't hurt to heat up the bolts before you try to remove these. Uh, Talaria is famous for using too much Loctite. Um, so a torch on any of these main mounting bolts will heat up the Loctite and make these a whole lot easier to remove. Um, we went ahead and heated up most of these so these should come off pretty easy. Um, again, you don't want to force any of these bolts and round off the head uh, it's going to really ruin your day if you have to drill any of these out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this main gearbox bolt. I'll then remove the two on the side, on or the two motor bolts on the other side. And then you'll see I'll do these two last, and you can see me drop the motor down. And then we'll go ahead and remove the gearbox and replace it. So there is one little clip holding the vent vent tube into place. Go ahead and just squeeze that. You can remove this. Now for this main gearbox bolt, you want to hold one side with an 8 and then it's a 15 socket on this side. And you should be able to pull this bolt out. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the two motor mounting bolts on this side. <clears throat> now the two motor mounting bolts on this side are very long and then they have these huge spacers in between them. I'm going to go ahead and get one out and then I'm going to slowly remove the last one so the motor doesn't just fall on the ground. The gearbox will usually get caught up on this little plastic guard that's on the back of your battery compartment. Um, so you will need to kind of wiggle it and be gentle when you actually pull this down. <clears throat> uh, you don't want to break off the little vent, vent tube attachment. So these are the bolts that are very long with the huge spacers. And then this will be our last bolt. So you want to go ahead and support the motor. And if you angle this down just right, you should be able to pull off the whole assembly in one piece. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and remove this little C-clip. We're going to remove all these mounting bolts, which mount it to the motor. And we'll go ahead and swap this gearbox out. All right, so the first thing you want to do is remove your little drive cog. There is a small little clip. You just use some little C-clip pliers and this should pull right off. Next you need to remove one, two, three, four, five, six of the main gearbox bolts and these also have little brackets on them. This one holds the little cover into place, your little gearbox cover, and this one here holds your DC converter and your tip over sensor. So again it doesn't hurt to heat these up first to soften up the Loctite.
and then your gearbox may need a little bit of tapping to pull out or it may just come out like this one did so you can see right here this whole drain plug housing just cracked and this does need to be replaced um, you can split this gearbox in half and replace just this half uh, the half with this drain bolt on it um, but today we're just going to be swapping the whole gearbox I'm going to go ahead and line this silver lip up with our mount and this should press straight into the motor let's see if it does if it doesn't you may need to rotate this little shaft this will rotate the splines on this and get this to line up There we go. Just kind of drops into place. And you want to be sure everything's all flush before you start to tighten these bolts. So shouldn't really be any gap between the gearbox and the motor you can see it's nice and flush and I'm just gonna finger tight all these bolts first and then we'll go ahead and crank them all down and go through and be sure I got all six of these bolts nice and tight. All right. Now it is a lot easier to reinstall this small cog when you have the motor removed. You can still install this when it's uh, when it's on the bike. It's just quite a bit harder. Once that's snapped into the little groove, be sure it doesn't pull off. And you should be good to start to reinstall your motor. Uh, you don't want to rush this. It can be a little time consuming to get these bolts with the spacers into place. And again, you'll see one spacer is a little bit longer than the other. And it's fairly obvious. <coughs> which one gets the longer spacer. All right, now it's time to lift the motor with the new gearbox into place. Now this can be a little tricky. Um, you do need to get this bottom mount lined up. You also don't want to break the little vent tube. But if you take your time, you will get this up into place. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and just use a wrench to kind of hold that gearbox into place. And then next I'm going to be mounting the two lower bolts. You can tell the one with the longer spacer is going to go on the bottom. And if you go ahead and just snug this one down going to kind of hold everything into place. So now we can install this upper motor mount so we can go ahead and get this gearbox bolt into place. Go ahead and just finger tight this 15 mil nut into place. You don't want to fully tighten any of these bolts down until all of the bolts are in place. 
All right, now it's time to tighten down all of the motor mounting bolts and the main gearbox bolt. All right, and finally, don't forget to reconnect your little vent tube. All right, so once you've reinstalled everything like this, um, there still is many steps left to get this bike rideable again. But I decided it'd be helpful to make you a video for the guys that do need to change their gearbox. Again, 99% of you will never need to do this, but I had the opportunity since I had a broken one in front of me, so I went ahead and made a little educational video for you guys. All right, so let's hope you don't have to do this, but if you do, these are the steps.